Hi, welcome to Arvations, RV Innovations, Restorations, and Innovations. Um, it's kind of an offshoot, um, uh, but um, kind of not. Uh, everybody has their uh, either their towed vehicles or their uh, uh, bring-alongs, their bikes, and all that stuff. And um, I have a Class C motorhome, 30 foot, and um, I wanted something to be able to take along camping uh, that I could run around with without having to tow anything heavy behind um, and without having to put anything heavy on the back bumper. And um, this is what ticked all the boxes for me. So this is going to be um, a couple of different things. This is a street legal 250 CC 1997 KLR 250. It is Pennsylvania street legal. Um, it is titled, registered, insured. I just got to take it to get inspected. Um, and I'm doing some work on it before I take it for inspection. So, um, but, uh, it's totally street legal bike. Um, very lightweight, 260 pounds dry. It's still under 300 pounds with a full tank of gas, um, coolant and oil. It is a liquid cooled bike, which is nice. Nothing re else really in this, um, category, uh, other than the new, new bikes like the WR, Yamaha WR250 and the KLX. Um, are liquid cooled. If you're looking at like an XR 250, that's going to be an air slash oil cooled, which is a, kind of also is too. It actually does have cooling fins on the side of the jug, but it, it's uh, definitely that's the uh, coolant tank there. Uh, dual radiators and does have a fan on the uh, on the other side. Uh, so pretty cool bike. Uh, you can get these pretty cheap uh, right now. This is 2022. Used stuff, especially running and driving, titled, um, you know, not totally trashed, is going outrageous. So I think I did really good. I bought this for under fifteen hundred, um, and that's after paying tax, titles, and tags. Um, and I think it's a good deal. It's got new tires on it. Um, I would call them maybe sixty forty uh, road dirt tires. Um, I did some really light test riding with this on the road and off road, and I was really pretty pleased with it so far. But test ride remained to be seen. Here's the tread. I mean, these tires are brand new; they still have the uh, the, nub, the casting nubs on them. So this is going to fit. Uh, it's going to go on the bike rack. It fits in my Class Three receiver on the back. Uh, my currently have my bike rack in there, but I do have a um, a tray rack. That I used to use for dirt bike riding on the back of my Explorer. Um, so should get on there nice and light. Um, this is way lighter than really anything else I could find other than the new XR250 Chinese clones. Um, you can get them for $1,800. Last time I looked, I'm sure that's over $2,000 now with the inflation. Um, delivered to your door. It's a brand new bike. You got to put it together. Um, and, you know, it's they're kind of cheap. They're certainly doable, but this is um, this is a much better bike, even though it's older. It only has it's just under eleven thousand miles. It's got ten thousand eight hundred on it. So um, this is just why I'm choosing this as my runabout scout kind of recon bike um, to go RVing and for day to day uh, traveling. This thing gets around fifty to sixty plus miles per gallon, depending on how you ride it and configure it. Meaning where they're using knobbies or a more street tire, friendly tire. Um, and right now, uh, gas here in PA is four seventy five a gallon. So that also kind of made this a no-brainer win-win. Um, great gas mileage. I can use this to scoot around. I don't do a lot of driving, um, but um, still, the driving I do is getting expensive. So that uh, was a big uh, plus, too, for picking this up. So it needs work. Um, I it ran, drove, started fine. When I uh, looked at it, I uh, started it up after doing the title work, drove it up onto the trailer. I did not drive it home because it was actually raining that day. Um, and I didn't have anybody to shuttle me. Uh, it was only a couple, wasn't even five miles down the road. So anyway, uh, what it need, what I've done with it so far is somebody had actually shortened lowered the suspension on this bike um, with uh, changing out the dog bone, which is 
in the suspension linkage under here. Uh, and when they did that, they, they lowered the bike by about two inches in the back. And what they did also, which I haven't undone yet, is they took these fork tubes and set them up about two inches, which lowered the front of the bike. I have to break these loose and drop these back down. I want this bike as tall as possible for the most amount of ground clearance. I'm 6'2". Um, I'm interested in the ground clearance. Uh, so that's how you lower a bike. Um, and then they also either bought or modified the kickstand two inches. So these are the dog bones, as we call them, that actually lower the, um, the rear suspension length. They're longer, which actually lowers it. And this is the kickstand. So it's about uh, two inches shorter. So I just uh, got this in the mail today, uh, painted it up, and, and uh, installed it. Uh, the chain guide was shot, which is, let me get a light on that. It's a uh, semi, like a polyurethane plastic that goes over and under the swing arm. It's this piece here, that, that bolt there, and uh, keeps it on. Uh, so I did not want to ride it with that because you're just having the uh, chain ride directly on the aluminum swing arm and underneath of it. So that's replaced. Uh, it also came with this lower aft chain guide, which is better than the uh, the stock one. The stock one is just a fin. This one actually goes completely around the chain and there's screws in the back, which allow you to install that without uh, breaking the chain. Uh, unfortunately, this one here, no such luck. This is one piece. Basically, you, you'd have to uh, drop the um, swing arm out of this, pull the whole this whole through bolt out to mount that. So what I did was I just put a uh, clip in it there with some tin snips. That part of the swing arm never going to come into contact with the chain. So I didn't have a problem doing that. And then I was able to slide this in from the back. Um, I have changed the oil in it and the oil uh, filter. I did that earlier today and I have this rear shock is shot totally junk and these are not rebuildable these were really soft even for, I had one of these when I was 16 and the rear shot shock was shot in it somebody actually jammed some rubber stoppers in those coils to try to stop this thing from bottoming out there's one there there's one there so that's shot that was expensive. That was going to be 600 bucks to replace that. But um, I think that's money well spent. It's really not rideable. Somebody also cranked the uh, preload on the spring all the way down. This thing's just a pogo stick. There's no dampening in it whatsoever. That's all the way down just to try to keep it stiff enough to ride. Um, so new shock is on order it's from Great Britain. Um, first thing I ordered for it and it still hasn't shipped um, the shock I got I could I did find one that was a little cheaper but it had no dampening adjustment so the one I got actually has like seven clicks of dampening in it um, there's a way there's a more expensive one where you can kind of adjust the the rebound and the compression this one is just the one stop that I have ordered this has absolutely no adjustment whatsoever the front fork on this is an air over so you can actually stiffen it up um, a couple different ways uh, easiestly more by putting some air in it um, and then also it's a conventional dampening rod fork you can change the oil out to thicker oil you can put stiffer springs in there there's a company that makes some there's two companies race tech uh, is one makes cartridge valves you unscrew these caps here and you drop the cartridge valves in there and um, then you can work the clickers either up here directly or pop these off and work them. So I'm going to see, after I get the back shock on there, I'm going to see how I like it. Um, it's a dual sport bike, but I do plan to do some fairly aggressive off-road and trail riding with it. The fork seals are leaking, but they've actually seemed to have tightened up um, from a little bit of use. So it might have just been a little from disuse, um, but I'm going to reevaluate the front after the back's fixed. I just, it can't do that 
when the back of the thing's bouncing and sagging all over the place. So, uh, so that's where we're at with it. I've also ordered some LED sequential turn signals. All these turn signals are shot just from age. Uh, they all work. Uh, all the lights on this work. The horn works, even though somebody's rewired the switch. I guess the horn, this horn switch went buster, and somebody put that one in there. That's fine. It works. Um, I've ordered some bark busters for it, because I do plan to do actual off-roading with it. Uh, the turn signals I've ordered, and um, we'll see after that um, whether I, how far I get into the front. I did... Um, check these bikes have problems with eating the heads uh so i did actually have this in here and i pulled the tank off last night and i checked the valves and i was very su happily surprised they were all within spec at 0.08 thousandths um very nice clearance the uh, cam logs look good um everything looked good on the top end so it somebody had painted the timing index marks on it which says to me that somebody has checked the timing on it i mean i plan to check the timing every time i change the oil probably at five thousand miles just because these were known to uh have valve train issues if you did not keep after those adjustments um didn't take me long to do that so that's where we're at um these are the mirrors the seat the seat's in really nice shape uh it was recovered it's a it's a one it's a, actually a three-piece stitched does not say Kawasaki on it. It's a really nice job, though. Um, recover job on it. Uh, even most of these that are in really good shape have at least one nick or tear in the seat. This doesn't. Uh, I don't know how recently that was recovered. But um, looks good. This is just like painter's tape that somebody put on here for, like, conspicuency. I'm not mad at it for conspicuency reasons. I can certainly take it off. Um... It does actually, this bike is kind of a dark hunter green. Uh, it does not stand out real well. Um, I do plan to do some mild road riding with it, running around town, you know, probably nothing less than you know, 30 miles at a time. Uh, somebody did it like a vinyl wrap on this front shield. Um, maybe try to, I don't know, darken this thing up a little bit, camo it up. They put the same on the swing arm. Not bad at it. Uh, I might actually, the U.S. Army and the Marines actually used this same bike for years as a recon bike. And I might actually kind of redo it um, in kind of that theme with a, a kind of, it's because this is almost an olive drab green. I might even black or desert sand out the, the rims, the forks, and the subframe. This whole rear subframe here has to come off to switch the shock out. It's really not a big deal. It's only a couple bolts. Uh, so that's where we're at with it. Uh, so far, really pleased with it. Um, I haven't been able to ride it a whole lot. I'm pretty surprised. I'm coming off of a, a Yamaha WR400. was my last dual sport bike. It was really just a dirt bike with a street title. Um, and it was a beast. Um, and I'm not mad at the, the power this thing's making. Stock exhaust is really quiet, which I want for campgrounds and trail exploring. Um, kickstart only, which is fine with me. It has a, an auto compression release, um, built into the cam and my, uh, my WR400 did not. It actually had a manual compression release that you had to hit on the, uh, handlebar or you were not getting that kickstarter over top dead center. This kicks easily. I could probably even work that with my hand if I was so inclined to, um, Starts nice and easy, has a manual choke on the, on the handlebar. WR was manual choke on the carb. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, the factory bag looks really good. Zipper works. Does not have the tool kit. Um, so this is the block that I need it to, block of wood I need it to, with the shortened kickstand, just so the thing wouldn't fall over. I don't need that anymore. All right, so stay tuned. This is my uh, scout runabout. Uh, I'm going to be doing some camping with this, some exploring, and uh, getting back on the road and the trail with it. All right, hope you enjoyed. Check out, uh, stay tuned to links and updates. Um, and do some road testing with it once we get the shock in there and um, see how we're going to go with the upgrades and uh, what we're going to do with the front end. All right, thanks for watching.